What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at three sets I bought in January, three sets I did not, as well as three sets that I sold. All right, so the first set we're gonna be looking at today is 76394 Fox Dumbledore's Phoenix. Just for a bit about this set, it is a Target exclusive in the United States. Back in the August round of price increases that the Lego company did, they hit this set with a $10 price increase from a $40 suggested price up to $50. The set launched the 1st of June, 2021, and its shelf life was exactly 18 months. Just retired on the 31st of December, 2022. 597 pieces, so even at that new $50 price point, it's pretty good price per piece. I think about eight cents a piece there. If you look at the sets that do really extraordinarily well, some of them are these great sort of bargain sets that even with the MSRP are a great value. A set like the Corvette that I bought or a set like this, even at retail price, it presents itself as such a great value. Sometimes those go on to be really great investments. On the flip side, sometimes you have sets that are super overpriced out of the gate and those in the end end up gaining price and becoming even more overpriced. So it's just funny how, it's funny how different sets can rise in the aftermarket. Market. It's also a possibility they could recreate this set in larger form as they did with the Hedwig, kind of the UCS Hedwig set. I actually got two of these, kept the price tag on one of them, just a flex for you guys. I did scoop these up for $30, which is a great deal. So I think these will be a great addition to my investment portfolio. Coming up next, we have set 76200, Bro Thor's new Asgard. This is a hilarious set. Just such a chill bro scene. They're hanging out, eating pizza, playing games. I'm really not a huge fan of Marvel or DC. It's just a universe that I'm not super familiar with. So I tread lightly generally when I'm Lego investing in that theme for that reason. This set is another Target exclusive, another set with a relatively short shelf life. You can see there from the 1st of August, 2021 until the end of the year, 2022. This set just retired. This is another set that, although it's not selling super strongly on the aftermarket right now, I do think that as it fades into one year, two year, three years of retirement, people are gonna think back to this funny, memorable scene, and they're definitely gonna wanna scoop it up for their collection. I purchased this for $15, which is 50% off. God, I just love this set. There's so much to look at. The fan, I love the use of the inverted turntable into the wall, looks like. Really loving all the detail there. Even as a parts pack with that couch, dude, the set is amazing. The next set I picked up is a Jurassic World set. This is 76947. This is a sort of a strange buy for me. I don't really invest in Jurassic World sets. You can see this set I did scoop up for, again, 50% off. This is a $40 set normally, actually 45 after the price hike. So to get it for 20, it was a no brainer for me. I should also say that the dinosaur from this set is already selling for about $20 shipped on eBay. So that pretty much covers my cost just from the dino. I believe this set should be on shelves for the rest of 2023. So that would give it about a 20 month shelf life, about average for the Jurassic World theme. And I know that was already three, but I did pick up a fourth set guys. This is set number 21166, the quote, abandoned mine. This set is so old. It has been on shelves since December 1st of 2020. So assuming it retires at the end of this year, that'll be a shelf life of right around three years, which for a Minecraft set is terrible. There's also been a huge overproduction of these $20 sets. This one doesn't have much going for it. It doesn't have any exclusive figures. Price per piece is pretty decent. So this is kind of a good value even at MSRP. Of course, if you're a Lego investor, you are well aware that it's better to get sets at a price that's lower than MSRP. That's right, I grabbed this set for $8.03, which is a 60% discount off of the recommended retail. All right, I just shared four sets that I bought. Now I'm gonna share three sets that I did not. So I have noticed since the beginning of the year that the Harry Potter Wizards Chess Target exclusive is still available, 76392. I do wanna shout out the people that scored this a couple months ago for 40% off. This was available for, I believe, one weekend. I was unable to take advantage of that deal. I can't remember why, I, think I was busy with something else. However, I will not be buying this set because I've made a mistake several times. I've bought really great sets that have appreciated wonderfully, but I've bought them at full MSRP, plus sales tax, basically full cost. But what I've found is that unless the set immediately goes more than double in price, that after fees and shipping, I'm not basically making enough money. There's also just other Lego investing opportunities that I'm a little bit more sure about, that I'm a little bit more confident in. So this is one that I'm gonna be passing up. 
The next set that I did not buy, it's a Friends set. I found at Target for 50% clearance, and I actually passed up on this set. This is set number 41711, Emma's Art School. This set came out just seven months ago in the middle of 2022. It should retire at the end of this year. I almost picked it up because it's a really cool uh, rebrickable modular build you can do with this set. But man, Friends, as an investment, I've noticed that some Friends sets will do a lot better on Amazon than they will on eBay. So as an eBay seller, I sort of have to know what themes do well on eBay, whereas what themes kind of flop on eBay. And basically the most important part of Lego investing is just being disciplined and not getting too excited about opportunities that you don't have to take. So for example, with this chess set, with this Emma's Art School, it's not that these are bad sets or that I don't think they'll make money. If you're like uh, me, maybe you did a lot of spending in October, November, December. So now in January and February, you wanna be a little bit lighter with your spending. Anyways, I may go back and pick this one up so that I can do the rubricable for it. But as a Lego investment, I'm gonna stay away from this set. And the last set that I did not buy this month Month, another local clearance find on 50% discount, 75573. This is the Avatar Floating Mountains Site 26 and RDA Samson set. Wow, that is a mouthful. This is the highest price set from the first wave of Avatar sets. If you look online on sold listings going on eBay for about $70 shipped, 70 or 80. And so after fees and shipping, if I'm buying it at 50, I'm really not making any serious money on that. And so again, I don't wanna waste my own time. I don't wanna just buy everything. So my discipline kicked in and I was able to pass up that deal. Now we're gonna talk about three sets that I've sold in January. So I should mention I sold these three sets locally, which means there are no fees for a platform and there are no shipping charges. So the first set that I sold was the Lego Harry Potter Attack on the Burrow. So I held this set for just six months. I bought it for $51 and I sold it for 100. That's a 95% return on investment in just six months. I've basically covered my costs for both of them on one sale. And so now this one, I'm gonna keep on the shelf for a couple years or until I get a good price for it. So the next set that I sold last month was 75319 Armorer's Mandalorian Forge. I got these around Black Friday in November. I have a couple of these sets. My total cost out of the door was $20.88. I sold this set locally for $30, which means I had a profit of $9.12, which means I returned 43% on my investment in just two months of hold time. However, at the same time, I do have to mention that's only $9. I made $9 by holding this set for two months. So this is kind of the problem with smaller sets is that the percentages can be great, but in terms of dollars, it's actually Actually, not all that much. And the last set that I sold this January is 75316, The Mandalorian Starfighter. The set just retired at the end of 2022. It's a great set. The Gar Saxon minifigure is going crazy on the aftermarket. This is another set that I ordered in November and I sold it in January. I was able to get these sets at a cost of around $34.50. I sold it for $65 last week. So that's a profit of $30.50 or 88% return on investment in just two months. This set has done wonderfully. It just retired at the end of 2022. So I do own quite a few of this set. I think it's gonna do wonderfully because of the Gar Saxon minifigure. Because I own so many of this set, I did want to start selling them a little bit early. And so when I found a buyer that was willing to pay this pretty fair price actually, because I was able to source it for such a cheap price, I'm able to make some pretty decent money on this. So that's it guys. Four sets I bought in January, three that I did not, and three that I sold. Let me know if you enjoy this type of content. Thank you guys for watching so much. Please subscribe for more Lego investing content. This is DG Bricks. Have a great day.